would like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth. We're here with Baltimore's own native son, Charles Rock Dutton. How are you, sir? I'm good, Donnie. I'm good. Thanks for having me on your show, man. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, how's how's uh, the career? What are you working on these days? Well, you know, I'm more behind the camera. Last four or five years, I got a picture coming out in June, a uh, limited release in June, a wider release at the end of the year, called The Obama Effect, and it's about the 2008 election. It's a political satire on the 2008 election with a lot of serious moments. We tried to capture all of those emotions that happened the first time around for this in that historic moment. Uh, are you playing the president? No, I'm not playing the president. We got a lookalike playing the president. I, I, I ain't nowhere near Obama yet. You know I mean? No, I play a guy that's totally obsessed with getting him elected in his own little community. He's a campaign manager in his own community. But he's so obsessed with this historical moment, it's to the detriment of everything else his own family, his own friends. He gets so locked up into this moment that he loses sight of what's really important in his own life. And uh, so it's a, um, it's a poignant piece, but at the same time, I'm calling it a satire on the 2008 election because it involves a white family, a black family, a Latino family, and all who they're voting for. Uh, oh, you know? any, any thoughts on how this president is doing? Well, you know, I look at it this way. If you, if you really believe that a president is really in charge of anything, then, you know, you can give him a grade, whatever. I happen to think that a president is nothing but a hired hand for the people who really run the country. So, yeah, presidents can... Presidents can... Um, change things, presidents can do this, presidents can do that, but no matter who it is, Democratic, Democrat or Republican, they pretty much keep the status quo forever and ever and ever and ever. The difference between, in my opinion, a Republican and a Democrat is the Democrats give out a lot of money, but it rarely gets to the people that are supposed to get it. The Republicans only give out one dollar, and they want an accounting on that dollar how much was spent and where it went. So, you know, I mean, listen, the man had a big, big job, uh, un, un, uh, unprecedented job to follow behind the previous president, George Bush. So, you know, there's no magic wands in this, you know. Um, he's done a lot of really good things that his team hasn't really promoted, I, I don't think. You know what I mean? He's done a lot of things that that they don't talk about and, and probably won't come to fruition until another year from now. Um, so, but you know, it, it's, all, it's all politics in my opinion, Donnie, and you know, everybody will say anything to get elected. Y young people, your message to young people in an era where we not only have the first black president, but this first black president could be re-elected, the, the state of young people, the state of young black people in America. Well. I hate to get cliche-ish on this answer, but uh, what other choice do they have? Do they put in Santorum and Romney or Gingrich or Ron Paul? Do they vote that way and get everything taken from them? Or do they vote the other way and at least there's potential to have some things done? that would better their future. And that's the sad part about it. It's always a question of the lesser of the two evils. Well, well let me be more specific. 40% mm -hmm. of America's prison population looks like you and I, black men. 40%, black people, uh, man, woman, boy, girl, we make up 12 to 15% of the US population. But in prison, black men comprise almost half of the prisoners in America's prisons, and this being the most incarcerating nation on the planet Earth? Mm -hmm. Well, um, unfortunately, we'll be talking about this 50 years from now, unfortunately. I'm gonna, put, I'm, I'm gonna try to explain it in a simple way as I could. As you know, I spent time in and out of penitentiaries in Maryland. And I was educated in the penitentiaries. I was given a degree, college degrees in the penitentiary. And so were a lot of people I know and a lot of friends. 
And when we all got out, and this was a while ago, this has been decades ago, a lot of the guys went back in, not because they were innate criminals, but they went back in because, yeah, they got a, they got a prison degree, but what was never fixed, what will probably never be fixed, was the community itself. So when they went in and did 10 years, when they got out, the community where they came from is now 10,000 times worse. And they're thrust right back in those conditions and told to deal with it. And so until America truly, truly, truly lives up to its creed, which is asking a whole lot, but until they truly live up to its creed and change what the real problems are. What's the real problem? What, what, what the real problems are is I would say Avarice capitalism. Avarice capitalism. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything about socialism. I'm talking about I'm talking about lustful avarice capitalism. Let me get mine into hell with anybody and anything else. I mean Baltimore City, they'll give us a new youth jail, new youth prison facility. They've been pushing it the past couple of years, but no major push on new schools. Well, you know, Baltimore is only indicative of, of the rest of the country with that, you know. Um, uh, you know, nobody's really, you know, I mean, people... people and, and then the election come around, and, and we're supposed to vote for the same old Democratic, typically white male-dominated political machine. Well, you know... It's, Democrats. Well, well, well <laughs> I, I hear you. I hate you, but that's what I'm saying. My point again, what's the lesser of the evils? Now, will the, will the Republicans do anything different than that? Well, on a state level, I mean, we saw some changes uh, with, with the Ehrlich. Steel, with the Ehrlich Ehrlich. Steel. Oh, I will agree. I, I will absolutely agree. Absolutely, absolutely agree. And um, But, you know, it's, it's hard to change the mentality of a state. It's hard to change to say, well, okay. You know, it, it's, it, it, I think black folks would really go or tiptoe on the other side of the political spectrum, on the other side of the hall. But just when they, they're they thinking about doing it on a national scale, some Republican or some Republican issue will run and chase everybody back across the aisle. Somebody will say something with obvious racial implications and overtones, with, 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 with obvious uh, um, the hell with poor people overtones. And that side of the aisle seems to be more blunt and straightforward with it than the other side is more subtle and quiet and but it's still you know, stabbing us in the back. No, it's it's still the same knife. Same knife. Same knife. You know what I mean? So what do you do? Uh, the bigger picture is what we don't have as a people. We don't really have a third party, and I don't care what you call it. But if you had a third party, which a third black party that said, okay, we're gonna vote where our true interest lies. And if it doesn't lie with this particular candidate, be it black or, be it black or white or Republican or Democrat, then that's not where we're going. But then who's gonna organize that? You know, it's just like saying, well, if only thing black folks really need to do to fund their own schools was that if every black, every working black person sent five dollars a week to a fund to uh, build and refurbish and rehab our own schools and colleges we wouldn't have to ask the government for nothing that is really simple but then who's going to organize it who's going to who's going to who's going to be the the, the the due diligence and 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 who's going to be in charge of the money you know and so trust you know, yeah, absolutely trust and unity and those are things that have been snatched out of our souls. Okay, we're gonna end on, on a positive note. Uh, and this is for particularly the young people. Uh, and and I, I'm venturing when, when I pose this question, but you, you appear to be a person who enjoys what you do. You've found your passion. I would submit to you that much of the challenges with the world is that there are so many people not doing what they love to do. So presumably, how does it feel to follow your passion, to live your dreams, uh, particularly with our young people in mind? Well, you know, it, it's, it's not easy. It, you know, it, it really isn't easy, uh, Donnie, because along with wanting to do what you love doing, you still got to live, you still got to pay rent, you still got to deal, you still got to struggle, you still got to take care of your family. And sometimes those are priorities that supersede 
doing what you, what you love to do. The handful of people that really get to do that, like I said, it's, it doesn't drop out of the sky. You really have to work for it. You really have to work for it. But just like everybody else, the guy that digs, digs a ditch for a living, you've got to be just as good at digging a ditch as you are in directing a picture. You know, so you can't say my lot in life is inferior to the guy that's supposedly up there. No, you're not. If that was the case, I've, I have more respect for all of my buddies who's not, who doesn't do what I do, who drive cabs and, and work every day and hustle and, and, and try to make ends meet and take care of their family, still living in those conditions. Those are the heroes to me. Those are the guys that I can say, shit, you know, I, I got a bad day. Ain't this some, I'm having a bad day. I had, a, I had to argue with an executive about a project. And these brothers and sisters are dealing with it constantly. So, you know, it, 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 still, you know the, it's, it still boils down to this, too. Once you know what you want to do in life, you got to get, you got to turn that into discovering or rediscovering your own humanity. What does that mean? Well, what I think it means from my perspective, there was probably a time when I lived without a sense and a feeling of humanity. You know, it was all about greed and selfishness and, um, uh, and not caring. Sounds like you America. Know? Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. I'm a, I was a product of my environment. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but I think once you discover or rediscover your humanity, you start feeling and thinking about things that seemingly have nothing to do with you. You hear about famine. You hear about uh, 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 um, uh, the genocide going on in the Sudan. You hear about all these world uh, catastrophes, and you feel for it. You think about it. You, you, it weighs heavily on you, although you're tens and tens and tens of thousands of miles away from it. You, 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 you get connected to the suffering, and you want to do something about it, although you may not be able to do anything but, uh, but, but send a dollar here or a, a 50 cent there or, 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 or try to you know, go and volunteer or something. But, uh, but those are the things that should spurn you to want to do something, even if it's just volunteering in your own community. That's what I think discovering or rediscovering your humanity is about. Service. Service, absolutely. Good deal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. The one and only Charles Dutton. Uh, keep watching BeMoreNews.com. Special thank you to, to Malik Rockman, executive producer. The news before the news, where we uncover the truth.